Hello and welcome to my channel. I know I told you I was going to share my ham radio extension project, but it's not quite ready yet. So instead, somebody had requested more information about my 12 volt distribution system. And I figured now would be a great time to show it to you since it's out of the car and uh, being rewired. So check this out. Welcome back and thanks for being here. I'm going to go ahead and step out of frame of the camera. Otherwise, it's going to want to focus on my face instead of on my project here. So let me get out of the way. And this is, in a nutshell, the electronics panel. And over here is the, uh, the amplifier and one of the ham radios. And we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the 12 volt distribution. And that is over here on this side. I've created this panel or designed it to be easy, relatively easy to remove. And so with that, I've included a bunch of quick connects. Uh, over here, you can see my uh, display, microphone and speaker connections. I have more of the same over there for the other ham radio, as well as quick connect area for the Helix and the amplifier. And um, but today I'm going to focus on the 12 volt voltage distribution of this of this system. The ground, I'll talk about that first. Uh, negative terminal of the battery. None of this connects directly to the negative terminal of the battery. And some people have a little heartache with that, but vehicle ground, chassis ground, body ground, however you want to call it, this is the ground for the entire panel. And this goes forward to under the uh, back seat and then loops around just a little bit and right about here inside the car is where the driver's side seat belt anchor is for a seat belt. And so there's a pretty large bolt going in to hold that seat belt in place. And that is where I connect a four gauge wire to uh, very adequately ground this entire panel. So this is now connected to ground when it's installed and therefore everything connected to this ground block is grounded and you can see I've got three wires coming out of it. These two here go down and across over to the other side of the panel and this one comes here to this voltage regulator. I will talk about that in a minute. Now 12 volts from the positive battery terminal that's carried via four gauge from a group 48 X2 power premium AGM battery from Batteries Plus. It's a dual purpose battery for both starting and deep cycle applications. And it passes through a 100 amp circuit breaker and then to the back of the car. It follows a path. I'll show you a photo of this path that it follows. And that comes to right here where it sits and waits for this 200 amp relay to energize. The 200 amp relay is energized. Here is the coil input and that comes from this device here. This is called an APO3. The APO3 monitors the, va the battery voltage here. So you can see that ties around over here to plus and minus. So that's where it's monitoring battery voltage. And let's just say for a moment that the car has been sitting overnight and the battery voltage is below 12.6 volts. So this is de-energized and therefore this is de-energized and therefore the entire panel is de-energized. Once I start the car, the alternator takes over, battery voltage climbs to greater than 12.6 volts, the APO3 then energizes. So it sends out 12 volts to this relay, energizes the 200 amp relay, which then sends power here to this fuse block. I've got four fuses on here. This is a spare. This one goes to the voltage regulator. This one goes to the 500 watt amplifier. And this one goes to the LC2I. So let's talk about the voltage regulator now. So 40 amp fuse goes down here to the vol voltage regulator. So 12 volts ground. Voltage regulator takes it. And what the voltage regulator is doing is it ensures that no matter what the condition of the battery is doing, this fuse block here is being fed with a constant 13.5 volts. I can up that to 14.2 if I want, but I have it set for 13.5 so that when I'm monitoring the battery voltage at 
the ham radio, I can tell if the if the car is running off alternator or running off the the battery. It's a weird thing to do, but it's just what I've done. So anyway, uh, this thing here, these ham radios, when I key them up, they draw a lot of current, and so you key the transmitter, and the if if except for when the car is running and the alternator is doing all the work, the voltage from the battery will drop to below 12 volts, and then that would cause the APO3 to maybe shut down and it will certainly cause the radio to shut down because it needs at least I think 12.5 volts I think in order for it to operate properly or at least 12 and so both this radio and the other radio are sensitive to voltage inputs especially this one because it's digital so that's what the voltage regulator is doing it is making sure that this fuse block here always has 13.5 volts so the fuse block, you can see negative positive input because the two ham radios actually have fused negative leads as well. So I'll talk about them first since I've already touched on it. I've got the two fused negative leads for the ham radios. The positive leads are fused as well. And then here is the LC2I turn on and the amplifier turn on leads. So anyway, uh, let's take a look here inside the fuse block here. So there is the fuse block. So uh, one amp, one amp, 25 amps, 20 amps. And, and that is pretty much how that works. From there, it goes out the split loom around the bottom of the panel and then over to the ham radio, the amplifier and the LC2I. The Helix gets its power from the front of the car at the, uh, the stereo. So it is not powered by here. So if I have this cut off, turned off, the Helix is still going to work. It's, it's powered from up front. I almost forgot to mention one more branch on this setup, and that is uh, a second feed that leaves the top of the main fuse block here. It is unfused going up to this point, and it goes to this 70 amp circuit breaker. So the circuit breaker is my fuse and that outputs from this lug right here and goes forward. Uh, connected to this, I have the trailer lighting module, and then another piece goes off to the front of the car to feed my 400 watt pure sine wave voltage inverter. So that circuit is protected pretty well, and um, it's another piece that I have to disconnect whenever I remove this panel. That is pretty much it for uh, voltage distribution back here. I can't think of anything else to add. Let me know if you have questions or comments and I will work on this. I still need to install this back into the car and get the ham radio going. I've got just a couple, the, the ham radio works, but I got to make it pretty before I show it to you in video. So uh, I think next week I'll be able to present the ham radio to you. And until then, thanks for being here and I will see you next time. Take care.